Hello everybody, today I want to show you how to derive the age of the universe using my quantum gravity theory, space particle dualism theory. According to this theory, every particle carries its own quantum of space, which is a complex number-based two-sphere, and many of these two spheres overlap to form the three-dimensional world we're so familiar with. Now when we look at a single charged particle, like an electron or a a quark, we see that it's emitting a lot of virtual particles. So around a charged particle, um, the density of the quantum vacuum is higher than in other places. So when we look at a massive object like Earth, <clears throat> we see that it emits a lot of virtual particles. And so around Earth, the density of the quantum vacuum is higher and that means that more pathways lead through the region around Earth. So that's what we call gravity. And in this model, it's pretty obvious that um, that in an infinitely large universe with no edges and no center, there can, can be no overall global gravity. So the expansion of the universe cannot be hindered or slowed down by gravity. That is very different from how things look in the mainstream. In the mainstream, uh, the universe can start off only with a very high expansion rate, because if it didn't, it would collapse back into what was the Big Bang singularity in the mainstream. Um, in space particleism theory, things are very different. Here, we can assume a smooth exponential expansion, starting at a very low expansion rate and, and then accelerating all the way to the present. Um, now, the reason behind this, the reason behind this expansion, uh, according to space parallelism theory, is that the universe is trying to compensate for the entropy increase in black holes. So if you feed a black hole linearly, uh, you give him, let's say, one donut per minute, then the mass grows linearly, but the entropy increases exponentially. That's because the entropy depends on the surface area of a black hole. So um, how can we calculate the age of the universe in, in such a model? It's actually quite simple. Um, the equation for the Hubble evolution in such a universe is written on, on this t-shirt here. So Hubble at any given moment is given by the present Hubble minus the initial Hubble divided to the h of the universe to the square times t to the square plus the initial expansion rate of the universe here called h minimum. Now, if, if t is zero, then this whole term disappears and we are left with the initial Hubble. If t equals t zero, which is the present moment, then they cancel out and we are left with t zero minus h minimum plus h minimum. So, so in the present moment, h equals h zero. Now, when we, in this video, I'm gon, going to use a simplified version of this um, uh, because the result is almost the same. Um, the result will be 42 trillion years, uh, counting from the moment that decoupling happened, the universe became transparent. Um, and the difference between the precise this the, using this precise equation and using the simplified one is very tiny. Um, they agree in in all the the seven first digits, first seven digits. So we're going to use a simplified one, um, which which will be this. We, we will just remove uh, the initial Hubble, the h h minimum or h initial. So we write h equals 
h0 divided by t0 to the square times t to the square. Now, when we say the age of the universe, what we mean is um, the light travel distance of uh, the light travel time of photons from the CMB. Because here we define age of the universe as the time that has passed since the universe became transparent. Because that's basically since when we can have solid structures, we can have uh, or gaseous structures or any structures at all like stars. So what we want to calculate is the correspondence between redshift, how much is light stretched out to the, the expansion of the universe and how much time has passed by. So the, the amount to which light is stretched out is different in every moment because H is changing over time. So um, when we want to know how much redshift we have, we, we have to take this um, Hubble. This um, Hubble is like um, a certain speed. It, it, it looks like a certain speed. So the one, one of the latest measurements of Hubble is 70 four kilometers per second per megaparsec. So in order to use that in our calculation, we have to, we have to um, get it into the units of seconds and meters. So we, we change it into meters and then we, we divide by the number of light years in a megaparsec and then we d divide through the seconds in a year. So that yields about seven times 10 to the power of minus 10 meters per seconds per light seconds. Yeah, so that's the units we're going to use, which we have to use. And so if we want to translate this into this Hubble value into into a redshift. We we divide it by c, and and and, and that's basically our, our our redshift. So let's um, so this is uh, the redshift. So we can uh, simplify this a little bit more. We, Let's put the t up here, t to the power of two, put the c here. Okay. Now what, we're, what we want to do is we make a sum because we want to know, we want to add up all the different redshifts in every moment, in every second actually. So we write sum sum here um, and we, we basically this is our sum here and what we want to do now is want to solve this sum so um, the solution for a quadratic sum like this is um, is uh, n brackets uh, n plus 1 close brackets open brackets 2 n plus 1 now uh, divided by divided by 6 so when we enter this here let's change n by t actually t0 because we're looking for t0 so this is t0 and this is t0 t0 and we put h here h is here h0 and 6 t0 to the square 
and C uh, equals Z. But we can take the Z down here, we divide by Z, so Z will be here. So we have one here. Um, and we see also here that this cancels out. So this T disappears and the square here disappears. So now we can multiply this out. So we have uh, this times this. We have two T zero to the square plus t0 um, and then we have plus 2t0 and then we have plus 1 h0 divided through all this here equals 1. Now we can get all these things over here to the other side. So we multiply by 6 T0 Cz divided by H0. So this is our equation now. And now we want to want to put this into the quadratic form. So what we do is we um, see that this and this has uh, uh, let's simplify this a little bit first. So this is uh, 3 this is 3 T0. Okay. So now we see that this is, has a common factor. So we can write 2t0 to the square plus um, 3 minus all these things here. 6cz divided by h0. And here we have t0 plus 1 equals 0. So this is already the quadratic form. So this would be from the quadratic a, b, and C. So quadratic formula is uh, is B plus minus square root of B to the square minus uh, 4AC divided by divided by 2A now we know that um, a is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so we have 4 here, and a, c, that would be 2 times 1, so that would be 2, so we have 8 here, we have 8 here. Now 8 is a tiny number because we're dealing here with 10 to the power of 20 something seconds. So we can basically ignore the the eight and say, okay, we have B to the square and then a square root. So it's basically, basically just B. So B, um, sorry, it should be minus. So minus B plus B would be zero. So that, that is ruled out. So minus b minus b that's uh, that's minus 2b divided by 4 and that re reduces to b divided by 2 minus b divided by 2 now when we step substitute this here this is b so we know that we are dealing with uh, um, 3 minus 6cz divided by h0. When we now divide this by 2, 
we have 3 divided by 2, we divide this by 2, we end up with 3 here. So, but all this is minus. So when we change it into plus, when we change it into plus, we end up with um, 3CZ divided by H0 minus 3 divided by 2. And this uh, term 3 divided by 2 is infinitely tiny when we consider that we are talking here about uh, 42 trillion years and, and, and here it's actually also in seconds so this is um, this is just about seconds so you could leave it out but um, it's it's good to keep it there to see the connection to the uh, precise uh, equation for the the precise version of all of this where this uh, the initial Hubble value is, uh, is taken into account. So this is the final equation. You have T equal, equals this here. This is the, I call it the time redshift equation. So what value are we going to put in here for Z? Basically, for Z, Z we um, calculate the ratio between um, the temperature, the initial temperature of the universe when when decoupling happened, which is uh, 2,900 Kelvin, and the um, present temperature of the universe, 2.725 Kelvin minus 1. So that's our redshift, here we go. And when we plug it in, then we find that the universe is exactly uh, 42 trillion years old. Yeah. So this here is in seconds, you have to, have to, uh, have to translate into years, light years. So it's uh, 42 trillion years.